as a flowchart dem demonstration of the uh, of the way that I've set it up in a demonstration workbook, I just want to go through the concepts. Essentially, we'll be calling Risk Optimizer. It's going to be calling a, a, an initialization macro that just starts us off on the right footing for the search. It's going to, uh, obviously, as, as a common first step, develop a pool of solutions and select a particular policy for evaluation. Then it's going to allow the uh, spreadsheet itself to update the kinds of uh, calculations that Huff modeling, the, the, this kind of marketing modeling and operations calculations would need to do to derive an estimate of the uh, of, of the profitability associated with that policy. But furthermore, again, managers don't just want single point estimates; they want to know a have an impression of the risk of that estimate. So we're going to allow risk optimizers to be leveraged once again to, to develop a, uh, a kind of a distribution of possible profitability that is essentially giving us some understanding of the the variation on po on uh, on profitability for that policy and if we have a good enough understanding of that level of variation we're going to go forward and call uh, use a, a macro call through risk optimizer to just take a check to see if our latest uh, uh, discovered solution is in fact better than the last one we have uh, have have seen and here what I'm going to be doing in the in the workbook is I'm going to be accessing one of the few obviously available uh, outputs that uh, risk optimizer regularly updates and that's the RO output box the the small blue box that all users of a of a search see being updated on a regular basis within Excel and because it's within Excel I can easily extract that information from this more or less text box and test to see if that value is greater than the uh, the, the best solution seen to date. If it is, uh, then I'm going to be calling on MapPoint to update the graphical uh, uh, output that I would like to see. That is, it's going to give me a new impression of what the market's going to look like if we go with that new policy. And it's going to continue to update those maps as better and better policies are discovered. So a manager seeing the solution evolve won't just be seeing a single number evolving or maybe a breakdown of some tabular statistics. They'll actually be seeing the graphic evolve, the geographic mapping of estimated results of this policy evolve as better policies are discovered by risk optimizer. So again, a flow chart depiction, this is essentially what's happening upon uh, each policy consideration. And again, as part of the simulation optimization, we'll be going through um, a, a search until the stopping conditions of the search are, are met, and finally the, the final presentation log is presented. As far as what is happening in the workbook in which Risk Optimizer and MapPoint are being used, here I have a, essentially a video clip of the workbook that I have. I, to, to emphasize that this is in a workbook, I'm showing both part of my desktop as well as the, the workbook itself. Uh, here we actually have embedded maps. These are objects that are MapPoint objects. If I would double click on any either of these, I would enter into map point mode essentially without actually having map point as an application open. Uh, this arrow up here is a minimized uh, uh, run arrow for risk optimizer. If I click on this or a, a macro, which uh, a button that I put on the, the workbook to call, to have a, a, a macro call to risk optimizer, either of these would start the search. I've, I've left my decision variables over here to be manipulated by risk optimizer. We see here uh, RO output, the, the, the text box that I m mentioned that uh, comes up as a standard feature of risk optimizer.
Twitter is building a report of not only uh, some of the data associated with the policies that are being searched for, but also it will have updated and evolving graphical outputs of how those policies play out in a kind of a geographic scheme. Uh, right now, there is no graphic here, but if I uh, start the search, and again, this is pre-recorded, so I'll, I can play it a couple times for you. And as I click on either the, uh, the the button I've created here or the one in the toolbar, Risk Optimizer will start. And one of the first things you'll see is down here a solution being described uh, visually through the help of MapPoint, Risk Optimizer, and Excel. And here I only ran it for a very short period of time, but what you were seeing were not only Risk Optimizer interfaces, Excel interfaces, but also essentially MapPoint interfaces, all integrated in a fairly seamless way, uh, largely behind the scenes through the use of just a little bit of, uh, of uh, visual basic code. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, I've worked on many applications that have uh, required hundreds uh, and sometimes thousands of lines of code. In this case, I only need essentially 32 lines of code to get all this to work. I'll show you it again. What's happening, uh, and again, code is not being run right now. I'm just essentially showing you a preview or a video of what I would do. I'm clicking on the button. Once I click on this, Risk Optimizer is calling code. The code it's calling, again, only about 32 lines of code total. Most of that is just pushing around uh, visual objects, making things look nice. Uh, the, the calls to map point are only a handful, only about five points, which are essentially saying, let's update these maps. Let's update the maps with the current data that Risk Optimizer has found for us that is embedded within this Excel workbook. It's very easy to seamlessly integrate these applications this way. The pushing around of graphical objects is a little bit more nuanced and can frankly be as complex as you want the, uh, the, the interface to be aesthetic. So that's really up to you. But we are trying to develop reports that are useful to managers both from a numerical as well as a graphical perspective.